So if you are wanting to get straight in to the recording process and the sort of creative things that I'm gonna be doing, feel free to skip this video. It's probably not for you. We're getting quite nerdy with these things. So to get things started, what I thought I might do is give you a little bit of a rig rundown, a bit of a tour of the space and the studio equipment I'm gonna be using. Um, just because I'm always interested in stuff like this, you know, how do people make things, what do they use, and all boring, nerdy stuff like that. I mean, it's not boring if you enjoy it, but, you know, I thought it'd be useful um, just to see how I've got things wired in. It might give you some tips and ideas um, if you want to do something similar like this for yourself or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get started on the guitars. So first up, we've got my Mexican jazz bass, which has been my main bass for years. It's all stock. Um, I've had it for so long that I, I've kind of worn frets down and I know the neck really well. There's so many dinks and sort of bits from gigs, I don't know whether the camera is gonna pick this up, that I just know where I am on the fretboard from <laughs> little dints and scratches, which is, you know, probably quite bad, but it's a very well geared instrument. Um, there's also, also my girlfriend Kat's ukulele, which I will probably steal at some point for a song. Maybe put some weird effects on it so you can't tell it's a ukulele. Um, and there's also a ukulele capo, which I think is just the coolest thing. <laughs> I don't know any chords on a ukulele, so it's just a bit of an idiot stick. So I can just know more chords other than C, F, G, A minor. Then we've got my jazz neck precision body sort of Frankenstein bass, which I built last year. Um, it's got House of Tone custom pickup. I'll leave a link down to the website. Matt and the team do an absolutely great job. It's a fantastic sounding pickup. I'm really pleased with it. It's just such a lovely, warm, p bassy rocky, yet Motowny sound. Real vintage sound. Then we've got my Yamaha FSX800C acoustic guitar. This has been my main acoustic gigging guitar for years. It's had a lot of wear. It's been on the bottom of aeroplanes, it's been in the backs of vans, it's been everywhere and it's it's had its fair share of use. This is my Epiphone Les Paul, an Epiphone Les Paul Studio more specifically. I'm a single coil guy most of the time. The humbuckers are really good for when you need a bit of a beefier sound, a lot of sort of sweet lead tones or crunchy rhythm sounds. The humbuckers really come into their own. And we've got Fender Telecaster, Absolutely iconic instrument, needs no introduction. Um, again, this is all stock. Uh, it's just a great sounding guitar. Um, you don't really have to do a lot to it. It's a telly, you know, it's it's kind of biting and in your face, but in a good way. Really cuts through the mix, really good for clean tones or distorted tones. The bridge pickup is really, really versatile. Um, I don't tend to use the neck pickup very much because I find it's a bit too dark, but the combination of the neck and bridge is really, really useful. It's just such a great sound for funky stuff, um, and all sorts of different tones. You can pull so many different sounds out of one instrument, and I absolutely love telling. So my main guitar, this is an American Fender Strat. When I got this guitar, the wiring was just completely wrong. The, the pickup selector was out of, I think it was like properly out of phase instead of the classic out of phase with these two pickups and these two pickups. It was properly wired wrong from the shop. Um, so I had to fix that. At one point it had a 21 way switch so you could get a ridiculous amount of switching combinations which was in place of the tone control but I realized that I wasn't using any of that stuff so I just put it all back to how a strat should be wired apart from the fact that this tone control affects the bridge pickup instead of the middle pickup just because this pickup does tend to get a little bright and trebly but other than that this is again all stock it's kind of the sound that I always hear in my head when I hear a guitar a guitar sound usually um, this is what I go for. And a lot of my heroes, Rory Gallagher, John Frusciante, Jimi Hendrix, obviously all play Stratocasters. So, of course, I have to have one in my collection. I've got my double bass in the corner. This is a fairly new acquisition. I've only had this for about two years, so I'm not an expert on it. Um, obviously, there's a lot of parallels between 
upright bass and electric bass but there's still a few things I need to learn but it's an absolutely great sound um, I've really enjoyed learning how to play it again I'm not by no means an expert but it's just such a great sound uh, I'm really looking forward to using that the main part of my rig is the Line 6 HX Stomp. I use this for all of my amp modeling effects and it's just an absolutely great instrument. I use this live all the time just because it saves having so many pedals. I've had expansive pedal boards over the years and this has just ended up replacing pretty much every pedal on my board apart from the Full Drive 2 which I'll come to in a sort of minute. Um, but yeah, it's got some great sounds. I'm mostly going to be using this for recording as well because what I've done because I know I need to work quickly with this project is I've set up common sounds that I use and then I can use this bank switch which is just a simple two-way switch to quickly swap between things to get different sounds I've sort of labeled things with different amp models um, and it's just gonna make things so much quicker when I need to get a sound that I'm after like a crunchy rhythm sound I can just fly through until I find something there's a Tom Mish inspired sound there um, yeah, there's all sorts of different patches and things which just should make things easier when I'm trying to get an idea out of my head into the real world and especially when I'm on time constraints I can just flick between patches instead of having to mess about with pedals or build new patches or anything like that it's there and it's just ready to go coming to the full drive and um, this has been my favorite overdrive pedal for years it's basically based on a tube screamer circuit it's got a couple of different switches that you can use. I tend to use it in vintage mode, which is closest to a tube screamer sound. Um, and it's also got a clean boost, which in the circuit is before the tube screamer circuit. And essentially what it does is it boosts the level before it goes into the tube screamer, giving you a sort of a creamier um, overdriven sound, which um, it's kind of quite unique to this pedal um, and it's just been such a part of my sound for well I think this was the first pedal I ever bought <laughs> um, as in single use pedal I used to have multi effects pedals like the zoom one of the you know the early zoom pedals but this has been a key feature since day one on all my pedal boards really it's been bashed it's had drinks thrown over it but yeah, it's an absolutely great sounding pedal. To make things easier, I've got a Shure GDLX, I think it's a 16 wireless unit. Again, it's a tuner and a radio receiver in one. This is because I'm a clumsy guy. I trip over things all the time. It just makes things easier when I've not got to worry about another cable that I can trip over. Um, I've been sort of built my entire desk around this. I've tried to hide wires out of the way. I've tried to move things out of the way. So when I am getting into that creative process, I get very excited. And it just makes it so much easier when you're not tripping over wires, um, which is kind of why I use the wireless. The latency is really good. It's not something that I notice. Other people might do, but my ears aren't that sensitive. It sort of sounds exactly like a cable to my ears. Um, and I don't notice any kind of loss of sound even when recording. It's an absolutely great bit of kit. Um, really glad I've got it. It makes things a lot easier. Coming to the interface, this is just a Focusrite Scarlet 212i, I believe is the model. Um, yeah, just simple, straightforward. Um, again, just sits under the monitor quite nicely. I've got access to everything here. This is coming out the back of the Helix. This just makes things easier, it's plugged in all the time, I don't have to worry about it. Then we've got the microphone, which I'll come to in a minute. Then the monitor control, which controls these KRK Rocket 5s, which I've had for years. And then we've got the headphone out, and this cable comes over to this little headphone monitor. This just means I can split signals off so I can listen to things through the headphones, which I have here, ready to record and track any point. And it also means I can send things out to different devices. So when I'm mixing, I can use this little Bluetooth style speaker um, and I can check my mixes like instantly without having to send them to my phone or anything like that. As I mentioned in the previous video that I'm gonna be using is Studio One. I think the, the official model is Studio One Two. It's very much outdated. I think they're onto Studio One Five by this point. Um, but I know the software really well. I've got sort of 
a bit of a template set up as well just to make things easier when I'm recording. So there's an acoustic setup, guitar setup, bass, and then a drum track, which I can program drums into, just sort of set up and ready to go, just to save me 30 seconds probably here and there. And also, when I come to record on the acoustic, I obviously have to use a microphone. I prefer the sound of an acoustic through a microphone. So I've just got that on a separate channel. And I don't have to worry about swapping it over when I create a new track. It's just there and ready to go. So I can just create a new song and it's ready to go. Everything's loaded in there and it's gonna save me some time there. I have got some screen recording software so I can show you some of the sort of ideas that I'll have when I'm mixing or recording things and little tricks that I'm gonna do. But unfortunately, I can't get this to work to get the audio coming straight out of the door for the screen recorder. I just can't get my head around it with OBS and I haven't got time to figure it out. I'm gonna try my best, but I don't think I'll manage it. But you will be able to see what's happening on screen at various points as well. Um, you just might not be able to hear the exact sound that's coming out. In terms of camera, I've got this little zoom Q2N, which is gonna be like focusing on the desk and what I'm doing. I am gonna try and record as much as I can with this camera. Uh, this is a Sony A. A6300, which I'll just sort of have as a bit of a vlogging camera almost, just to sort of talk you through some of the ideas and processes, because I want to document as much as I can, keep, you know, sort of, I'm gonna keep this for the more interesting bits and use this as a bit more of a B-roll camera, um, and maybe to get some of the sound for coming from the monitors and stuff like that, because this has got a really, really good microphone in it. In terms of microphone for recording acoustic guitar, this is the Behringer, I believe it's a C1, or B1, it's usually meant for drum overheads, but it sounds great on acoustic guitar. Um, it's small, it's sort of like a pencil condenser microphone, which is really useful for getting acoustic guitar tones. You can kind of just point it in front of the guitar and it sounds pretty good, which is always good for me. You know, I'm, I'm not a studio engineer or audio expert by any means, but it's a great sounding microphone and it's cheap, which is great. Um, I also have an SM58 if I want to do any vocal things, but most of this is going to be instrumental, um, maybe with a few spoken lines or the odd melody kind of thing being sang here and there. This might be a little bit of a nerdy video, um, but I just thought it'd be cool just to run things through. I find stuff like this really interesting, and I thought I'd do like a really, really quick video. It probably isn't that quick, but just to talk you through the guitars, the gear, and the sort of studio setup, just to show you what I'm doing really. Um, and the sounds that I'm going to be getting from these guitars and things um, just before I start recording with them just so you can get an idea of that. Uh, if you have any questions please do leave them down below I can give you you know all the all the nerdy details all the geeky details on these things. Um, I'm happy to talk about gear I'm just one of those people I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad with these things. <laughs> it's been quite a nerdy video if you stay if you've made it this long Really appreciate it. If you have any questions about anything, any of the sort of pedals, guitars, anything, any of the specifics, please feel free to let me know. I'm always happy to talk about these things. Um, so the next video will be the actual start of it. So again, I'm gonna document it as much as I can. Editing this is gonna take a hell of a long time as I've probably explained a little bit in this video and the previous video because there's gonna be so many cameras I need to go through, screen recording and you know, sort of making it make sense um, and I'm not the world's greatest video editor as I mentioned in the previous video. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it regardless if you have made it this far and uh, yeah, tomorrow it begins the 12 hour challenge. <laughs>